Well, welcome everyone. I'm glad to be able to join with you this evening and share some of my favorite information. Um, I am the 2013 Kansas Teacher of the Year, and I also have a dual role where I am a technology integration coach for 300 teachers in Andover, Kansas, which means that I go in and help teachers use technology in their classroom. And more than that, we kind of talk about how to be using technology effectively in the classroom, not just to have a tool in there, but how are you going to use technology in order to make your vision for excellent teaching come to life. So I'm going to be sharing with you my personal passion around global collaboration and how my students connect with the world. So I actually come from a place called Kansas, as you um, may have heard a little bit ago. And you know, this is not someone's general location to spend their vacation, you know. I want to go to summer vacation in Kansas. You just don't hear that. <laughs> We're more of a flyover state than any, or a drive-through state on their way to see friends in Texas. Um, but, you know, most people think about this when they think of Texas and the wonderful Wizard of Oz, which is important to our state for sure. I think Curtis uh, would agree with me on that one. Or you might think of tornadoes. And I was in China last week, and when I shared this particular slide with them, the whole room would go, oh, tornadoes. And I asked them, have you ever seen a tornado? And the people of China said, no, never. I said, would you like to see one? They said, yes, but we're afraid. And I said, well, it can be a little scary, but it can be very exciting at the same time. Um, I'm also, Kansas friends are also known as a place where you can see for miles, the big sky country, because the land is so flat, which is not entirely true of Kansas, but you can see for miles. That part is true. But it's also a place of really curious children, a place where kids can communicate with the world. They think critically and hear from many perspectives before they make an informed decision. And they talk to students in places like Kibera, Nairobi, Kenya, our friends from the Cherry Children Education Center. And some of us that are on the call today have actually worked with this school. And talk about an amazing place. Uh, it's 250 children who do not have a lot of technology, but they do have two MacBook Pros and wireless internet and they Skype with the world and share their culture with you. And they would love to do this with you at any time. So if you're interested in speaking with the children of Cheery Children, uh, definitely contact me and I will forward on the information to you. We talk to places like Tasmania, Australia, where we talk about what teenage life looks like in your country versus their country. Uh, we talked to a scientist working in the Arctic Circle. This was an event that happened last spring, and this particular scientist is working, if you can imagine the map, Norway, Sweden, Finland, all of that, go north of that in the Arctic cir Circle on a glacier. This man stands outside on the frozen glacier and Skypes into classrooms to share his research about frozen oceans with your students. Now, I don't know about you, but as a science teacher, that would be rocking awesome. <laughs> and it's possible and completely free. We also talked to students in South America. These children are from Honduras, and they were sharing their culture with us, some of the traditional clothing. We had a fourth grade class here talking to a fourth grade class there, and they were just sharing about how do you celebrate holidays or um, what are some traditional clothes you wear and foods and so forth. We also talk with students in Spain. This was a high school Spanish class that we have here in Kansas, and they partnered with a school in Barcelona to practice their Spanish speaking skills. They wanted to talk to native Spaniards to uh, practice their conversational Spanish, and the Spanish students were actually working on their English skills. So we would communicate in Spanish, they would communicate in English. It was quite an interesting conversation, but really brought in an an opportunity for students to uh, not only discover a little bit about each other's location and culture, but we found some interesting 
you know, information such as the uh, students of Spain, they walk to the beach every day. Well, it takes 10 hours for us to drive to the closest beach. And they said, how do you survive it? <laughs> and then we asked them about when school was ending. Ours ends before Memorial Day. They don't end until the end of June. And we say, oh, how do you survive it? So <laughs> it's kind of fun to learn about kids who are just like us around the world. And we talked to students in China. What's really interesting is China has things like Google and Facebook and Twitter blocked, but they do have Skype. And many of the schools have English lessons beginning as young as first grade in China. So having your students do a Skype collaboration with kids in China is very possible. They'll speak English, and they could be doing things like uh, playing songs for you on their musical instruments, and your students could be playing musical instruments back and forth. And I will tell you that their English grammar is better than many of our English grammar skills. So it'd be an excellent way just to practice English skills with children. And all you need to do things like this is just have a webcam, some speakers, or if you have an iPad, that will do everything for you. It does work better if you have something like an Apple TV that will mirror what's on your iPad to a projection screen so everyone can see a little more clearly. But if that is the only webcam you have, it's quite possible to do a Skype call with that or uh, Google Hangout. Or if you just have a laptop with a webcam built into it, or even a Chromebook, that works too. As long as you have a webcam and some speakers with the possibility to project it, that's all you need. And from there, you can connect your students with the entire world. It's pretty awesome to do, I'll have to admit. And you also probably need a place to start making connections. So one of my favorites is Skype in the Classroom. I'm going to give you a tour of that today, as well as Google Connected Classrooms. And that's more of using Google Hangouts to connect your students with experts in other classrooms. And there's one more that I'm going to add to the list. I wanted to make sure that it was still live. They were doing some, some changes. We're going to give you a tour today of also the NASA connections so you can have your students work with NASA educators and actually have opportunities to do uh, calls with people like astronauts, which is amazing. Just the whole concept around having people like that contact your class is pretty incredible. And all of this, my friends, is after you have your webcam, is absolutely no cost. And if you're in the chat, is free in your price range, friends? You just throw it in the chat if you think it is, because that's about all I can afford as a teacher. Oh, people are smiling. See? <laughs> it's a good thing. All right, so what can you do? What is possible? Well, let's take a look at Skype in the classroom first, okay? This one will connect you with experts to have work with your students, like the scientist that's working in the Arctic Circle. It will allow you to connect with other classrooms, like we did with the class in Honduras or the one in Spain. It will also um, occasionally have some virtual field trips and work with people who are game changers, people who are really working to do things like world peace, um, social innovators. There's several of them that partner with Skype in the classroom. So if you do anything on the power of one in your class or anything of that message at all, perfect place to begin is starting with Skype in the classroom. It is a completely free education platform, and it just is a place to start connecting, or at least begin to search out possible connections for your classroom, like guest speakers, kids on ultimate field trips. And there's 81, now it's up to 84,000 teachers that are in here from all over the world. So if you're getting ready to do a novel study, and the novel just happens to be in Mexico, you can find teachers that are in Mexico. If you are getting ready to do a historical event, and you need to talk to somebody who's living in Poland, you can find classrooms narrowed down specifically just to that country of Poland or Russia or Australia, South Africa, it's endless. When there's 80 some thousand teachers in there that want to connect with you, it's 
kind of like the easy button <laughs> to find the connection. And over 200 countries are involved. Okay, so let me show you first a couple of our favorite connections that we've had with using Skype in the classroom. One of them is Biscayne National Park, which is in Florida. It's If you go all the way down to the Florida Keys, it's that bottom of the peninsula. On the left side, on the Gulf side of Florida, is where you see Everglades National Park. They will also do Skype calls, by the way, and they are awesome to work with. You go to the east side, the Atlantic side, and you connect with Biscayne National Park. It is so remote that it takes quite a while to get down to it, and their rangers are waiting for somebody to bother them, more or less, what they tell me. They're like, yeah, we could be knitting sweaters or something, but it's really cool when we can connect our our, sci our rangers with kids all around the world, um, especially because we're doing some really interesting research here. For example, they have been harvesting lionfish. Now, if you're familiar with what a lionfish is, but it's a poisonous fish that is not a native fish to the United States. It's an Asian fish. And in the 1980s, several people started having fish tanks, saltwater tanks with these fish. And when they were done with them, they just threw them into the ocean. Well, now it's an invasive species that's covering most of the Atlantic coast. And because it is such a problem, these rangers and the scientists that work along with this national park can harvest these particular lionfish. They will send the lionfish to biology classrooms and do a virtual dissection with your students. So if you have a biology class, you could be working with them and collecting data that goes right back into that park and help preserve other fish species that are in uh, that are in the Atlantic that are endangered right now because of this invasive creature. But also, Biscayne is incredible to work with to talk about sea turtles. Who you see here is um, Ranger Chris. And Ranger Chris has spent maybe a little too much time out into the sun, but he is so much fun. You get on the call, and he sounds just like Crush from Finding Nemo. So he gets on there and he's like, hey, dude, welcome to Biscayne National Park. I'm Ranger Chris, and I'm really ready to tell you all about sea turtles. It's going to be awesome. And the kids instantly respond to ideas of like, oh, yeah, let's play. <laughs> and he is the most fun. And the kids will ask him questions like, Ranger Chris, how many sharks are in the ocean? This photo that we took was at the moment that we asked him that question. And he kind of looks like Animal, the Muppet. He closes his eyes and gets really in deep thought. And he's like, wow, that's a really hard question. I don't know how many sharks are in the ocean because that's like a lot. But I can tell you about the sharks that are at Biscayne National Park. And I'm telling you what, my friends, a highly interactive and fun experience for your students. We also love working with Sharks for Kids. This is Jillian, and she works as, she is, I'm sorry, a marine biologist in the Mimi Bahamas. She goes out and is also a video documenter of sharks. So she will do Skype calls to talk about ecology, uh, human impact on the environment, but she also will do Skype calls to discuss things like digital storytelling. Because she makes documentary films, and I come from middle school language arts. Well, I don't have anything to do with sharks in my class, but I do have students making videos. Why not talk to someone like Jillian, who makes videos for a living, to talk to students about what makes a good video and what doesn't? It's a perfect fit, and she loves to share what she is doing. Um, just one of my favorite people to work with. So if you want to talk with her, just do Google Sharks for Kids, and you can track her down real simply. Um, we would love to work with Penguin Authors. So Penguin Books, the publishers, actually have a partnership with Skype in the Classroom. And they have authors lined up who want to do Skype calls in your classroom and share how 
They love to write and the importance of perseverance to make your goal setting and reaching that goal. Uh, they have illustrators like we see right here. Uh, Max Cornell, he actually illustrated with the students sitting in the room. And he taught them laws, the law of black on shading and how it makes characters look more alive when it comes to um, doing illustrations for books. Incredibly interactive. The students loved it. Again, completely free. And our friends at the Lowell Milken Center. Uh, the Lowell Milken Center is in with, is in Kansas. I'm sorry, and uh, good friends of the National Network of Teachers of the Year. They have Holocaust stories and other power stories of the power of one that would just impress any classroom on what one person can do if they stand up and do the right thing. And they will do Skype calls for free as well. Badlands National Park, actually several of our national parks will do Skype calls from Glacier National Park, Grand Canyon, Denali, uh, Yellowstone is, was one of the first. Several of these will do Skype calls. And some of our national historic sites, such as Brown versus Board of Education, also a Kansas connection. These folks actually create a lesson that your students, if you're in the elementary side, will do the great peanut butter and jelly debate, deciding should every child have the exact same school lunch, whether you deserve it or not, or whether that sounded bad, whether somebody should uh, have a choice or not is the whole idea. But that's the elementary side. And then we get up onto the secondary levels, we have a session that they do just about the civil rights movement and why education should be fair and equal for everyone. Highly interactive, very powerful experience for students. So let's go take a look at a couple of the websites that, I, that we're going to give you a tour of today. We're going to start with education.skype.com. And if you want to take a screenshot with your phone, that would be a great one just so you have it to come back to. But I'm going to give you just a sharing of my screen. It plays nicely. Okay. Hopefully you can see my screen. Is it looking good, Sarah? Hopefully. Okay, good. All right. So education.skype.com. This is the website I was telling you about. Again, completely free. And all you need to do when you log in is if you have a Microsoft ID, or if you have a Skype ID, that's all you need to, to log in, and you're there. So it's very simple. And let's give you a short tour. It is divided up into four sections. Home, find a lesson, find a teacher, and mystery Skype. We're actually going to start over at mystery Skype, which is a very popular game. I don't know if any of you have played it, but it's a game of 20 questions. What you end up doing is that you have two classrooms who the teachers are the only two who know each other's location. The students have no idea. And I know a few of us in the audience today have played Mystery Skype, so you might want to pop in to the chat and you know like give a little thumbs up or explain how much you love it. But it's a very easy game to do. For example, uh, let's say that we were trying to guess where, um, well, let me do it this way. Our friends in Kibera, we've played the mystery Skype with them, and their director, Jerris, is so much fun to play with this game with. We get on the call with him, and the students will ask him, are you in North America? And he says, no, keep guessing. This is a great game. And then the students will ask him, are you in Africa. He says, yes, I am in Africa. You have a great mind. Keep playing. And eventually they narrow it down and are you in Kenya? And he says, yes, I am in Kenya. You are very clever. Let me tell you about where I live and all the animals that live here. We have camels and lions. We have donkeys and we have giraffes. And it is the most beautiful place in the world. And the students fall in love with Jerris. But it doesn't have to be with just one person. It can be done classroom to classroom. So 
So what you see here is that I signed up to do Mystery Skype. So if you were at this website, um, if you notice what I had done is I simply went under Mystery Skype, and then I scroll down and there's a section that says search the map. So when we go to the map, here I popped up, I can look around the world to see other people who also Mystery Skype. Here's one in Georgia. Come back up to the top and let's go a little further down. Here's one in Cuba that will do Mystery Skype with your students. If I'd like to connect with Ms. Wong, all I have to do is click on her name and then I can add her as a Skype contact directly from here or I can send her a message. If I send her a message and be like, hello, Mrs. Ms. Wong, we would love to Mystery Skype soon. What does your next week look like? Send the message and Skype will send her a direct email for her to start connecting with us for a Mystery Skype call. It's that simple. And I do love the easy button. I don't know about you, but I love the easy button. So that's the mystery Skype. If we go to find a lesson, here are the most recent lessons or proposals, I guess is a good way to describe it, opportunities for you to connect with someone else. Here is a third grade class. And I have a feeling this is going to be our friend Darcy, but we're going to take a quick look here. Yes, it is. This is uh, the 2013 North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Miss Darcy Grimes, who I adore in every way. She is a third grade class. We'd love to do Mystery Skype internationally between now and April 14th. We live in the Appalachians. And in North Carolina, we want a class in a different country. If I wanted to register for this lesson, all I have to do is click this green button and I'm in. Nothing harder beyond that. Then Darcy will send me an email that says, hey, I saw that you registered for the lesson. When would you like to set up the call? So you can put out a mystery Skype request that way. Or take a scroll down through here to see what other options are available. So if you remember, Charlie and the Chocolate, Chocolate Factory as a kid. You can now actually do Skype calls with the Royal Doll Museum and tour the museum that is in the UK, in Wales. And it's just, it's so brilliant, the idea that you can do this and it's the, it's just available. These are things that were never available when I was in school and I'm just fascinated. I would never be able to take my students to the UK, and I can't afford to go myself, but I can take the tour virtually. And this particular one, he was looking for anything this week. So if you do uh, are interested in having this opportunity this week yet, let's just register for the lesson. And I would email penguinauthors at gmail.com saying, Hey, we'd love to work this Friday. If it's opportunity still available, let's set something up and the Penguin authors will do that for you. So it's kind of slick. You can do the hard option and keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Or you can come to the top and just do find a lesson this way. So let's type in Penguin and see what we get. You now get Beaky. This is Beaky, he's a South African penguin who was injured offshore by a boat. And now there is a conservatory that's in South Africa that will use Beaky on a Skype call with your children to talk about why it's important for us to protect our environment. And it's just like you had taken your own class to the zoo or a local conservatory, except you're taking them from your classroom virtually to South Africa. Time zones do become an issue, as you can imagine, with talking to someone in South Africa. So this particular lesson works better if you are on the East Coast and you could start around 8 in the morning. That's still while they're open in the afternoon and your students could be talking with Beaky. 
um, if you are, have older students who are doing research projects like Genius Hour and want to know more about uh, African penguins or that sort of a thing, they will do what's called um, Skype video messaging. So what that is, let me pull Skype up here just real quickly. Any foot one that is in your contact list, you just right click on them and then you can send a video message, just like this one. When I record it, it starts recording, one, two, three, then hit stop, and then I can email it if I wish. We won't send this one out because Michael would be probably a little curious about why I'm sending her this message. But you can have your students work with time zones anywhere in the world just by using that video message tool. I love it. And you don't have to worry about places like Australia or anywhere in Asia for that matter, in Eastern Africa, Middle East, because when you leave video messages, it's easy for everyone. So it works great, by the way. Okay. And in Find a Teacher, that brings you back in here to the map. So that's a quick way to do it. But you can switch just to guest speakers alone. And that will narrow down anyone who is an expert who's willing to work with your students, such as the Badlands National Park. And they'll talk, give you a whole list of things that they'll cover from fossils to sedimentary rocks, prairie habitats, plains Indians, bison. All of these are available at absolutely no cost, my friends. I just, I just love that feature. And one thing that I have created for you today, um, I created it earlier this summer. I kept track of all of the virtual field trips that we did in our school district this past year and put them together into a spreadsheet. And I'm giving you the link today so that you can have it as well. It's just a public Google Doc. They're listed as the 28 different locations that we connected with. And then I have their actual addresses. If we did the actual call, what we thought of it, if it has an NA, it's, these are ones that we're going to be doing here soon. I just put them on the list for me to reference in the future. How to contact them, that's the direct link that shares information about doing Skype calls with you. Which tool they prefer to work with. I'm sorry, that makes it a little jumping around. If they want to use Skype, if they want to use WebEx or Google Hangouts, any of these, are, they're not ex any software to spend money on. It's just a download and you're good to go. What time zone they are in. So if you are in mountain time zone and you need to talk to a group that is in the Eastern time zone, you know how to schedule it around your students. And then the topics that they cover. For example, this particular one, the Center for Snake Conservation, this is the Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter of the United States. He's a friend of mine named Cameron Young, and he takes students out on virtual field trips for snakes with his phone. And he picks snakes up off the ground and shows them up onto the camera. He's like, hey, guys, check out the snake. You see the square part of his head turning more into a triangle? Guess what, guys? That means he's dangerous. He's a viper. And he's holding it in his hand. I just I get a little, like, freaked out about it. But he is a herpetologist. He's licensed and, and knows what he's doing uh, and works at this conservatory. But he talks about, you don't pick up snakes. I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. But I want to show you how animals camouflage in their natural environment. Or he will do a snake feeding and turn on the camera at his office, and your students can actually watch a snake eating. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, but I've given um, a list of whatever they would cover. For example, um, the Lewis and Clark National Historic Headquarters, which is in Nebraska. They will talk about the Louisiana Purchase, the Lewis and Clark story, Native Americans, slavery, many things. And I'll tell you, they are incredible to work with, absolutely incredible. Um, and I'm going to give you also some notes, some things that we discovered. If, for example, at the National Park, or sorry, the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail, if you had two or three questions your students really wanted to know about ahead of time, 
and you wanted to share that with them, they know how to prepare by pulling in the right artifacts for you. But if you're going to have your students talk to some place that's a virtual field trip, why not make it personalized to them? That's where their passion comes in to want to know more. So it gives you a, a, a Kickstarter on how to get connected with your classroom. Okay. Um, now, Google Connected Classrooms are my next favorite spot. The difference between the Google Connected Classrooms and the Skype is that Skype is a one-to-one -one environment. When it comes to the Google Connected Classrooms, it's more of turning on a television or a YouTube channel to a virtual field trip that you just get to watch. Um, it's not a one-to-one. -one. That doesn't mean that it can't be. It just isn't. It's more of a webcast or like a webinar that you and I are watching. They do not adjust their time around your schedule. That is a negative because um, a lot of them are over the exact lunch hour that my students are at lunch. But they are all recorded into YouTube. So there's a bonus as well. Here's one that's coming up October 14th. And if I, I should tell you the website we're at is connectedclassrooms.withgoogle.com. And then if I click on the event, Lemony Snicket, if you've read any of those books, Time for Kids is going to have a live chit chat with Lemony Snicket as a webcast and allow your students to ask questions during the webcast. Most likely there will be hundreds of classrooms involved and maybe your question will be answered live on the call while you're there. But again, they are archived and you can go back and show just the little piece that works perfect for your class and you can go back and use those later down the line. If I'm interested in watching this event, all I have to do is say yes and that instantly puts this event on my Google Calendar and will send me a reminder like, don't forget, October 14th, 10 a.m. Pacific, which is noon central time, we will um, we'll be having an opportunity to talk, or not talk, but at least watch and maybe ask a question to Lemony Snicket himself. Which, you know, if your kids are reading that book, how cool is that, right? Um, it's not the only option, though. If, if I jump back to their main page, and scroll down, they have an opportunity for you to get involved in a community. And they have a list of some of the groups that they work with, like the, the National Baseball Hall of Fame, the Australian Olympic team, um, Wilderness Classroom. These guys are incredible, absolutely incredible. I highly recommend working with them. They will do a one-on-one -on -one call. And the Wilderness Classroom is the 2014 National Geographic Explorer of the Year. The downside with working with Dave Freeman, who's incredible, I, I will say it's worth every experience that you can do to make this happen, is the calls are $79. But he will even do one on what it means to be curious. Highly interactive, and he does calls from wherever he's exploring at the time. So right now, Dave is out doing a boat ride from the Great Lakes all the way, he's paddling all the way to Washington, D.C. as part of a National Geographic event, and he will do Skype calls from the boat, which is pretty incredible, I have to tell you. And our students had this call about a week ago, and they said it was worth every penny of it. Now, it's not something you can afford to do every day, but for a one-on-one, -on -one, that's just how it is to work with him. But if you look a little further up, there's one that says join the community. That takes you to this spot. It is a Google Plus community. And it has thousands of teachers in here as well. That if you are just looking to do a mystery location or, hey, my students are getting ready to read Lemony Snicket. Is anyone else reading? Would you be willing to do a uh, Google Hangout with us? And just talk about the book. This is a perfect place to begin. You just pop in here and leave a post. I teach third grade. We're beginning a, a Spanish class in Chicago. We're beginning a short study on uh, 
I I don't won't mess up that name. <laughs> and so School of Hispanic Heritage is month celebration. Are there any classrooms in Guatemala that might be able to communicate with us and share their culture? A strong international group is in this particular area waiting to connect with you. If you look over on the left, you'll see that the posts are tagged because scrolling through this can be a little overwhelming. The virtual field trips are this tag here. Click that and that will tell you about all the upcoming Google field trips that are happening, including the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is going to do a whole thing all about the Everly Brothers. I, I'm personally excited about this. I think I'll have to watch it myself. So I'm going to go ahead and tag that as a yes. And so October 20th, 12 p.m. Uh, Central Time. You'll notice that that automatically looks as it's set for my own time zone. It will do the same for you as well. So even though the earlier one was at 10 a.m. Pacific, it automatically locks onto my classroom and my calendar as uh, as noon. So it's kind of slick. Okay. So I've also created another spreadsheet for you on this. I went back through the community and pulled every archived Google Connected Classroom field trip into one giant spreadsheet to make it easier for all of us because it gets a little cumbersome to try to figure out what's all here. So now all you have to do is hit a control F on the sheet and I'll give you the link for it. And if I type something like Holocaust in, it'll jump me directly to where that is on the spreadsheet. This is a survivor sharing his um, survival of Slovakia during the Holocaust. All and it's coming from the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum and the link that takes you directly to the YouTube archive of that event. And he'll tell you his story. Let me tell you, my friends, incredible story to listen to. And he starts off with how important it is that the students watching his webcast understand the power of the education system that they are in and how blessed they are to have choice and have the option to learn where when he was a boy he was not even allowed to go to school as being a Jew in Slovakia. Powerful, powerful. And this is here forever. So even though it happened last spring, I can jump directly to any part of the video and play that selection for my students. Okay? So again, I will give you this in full list. There is something in here for every grade level, every, there's so much for high school science in here. Uh, the Google has a Friday science fair, a Google science fair. So there's a lot of biology and physics and chemistry in here that is perfect for secondary when there's still some little bitty things, including ring-tailed lemurs from the Minnesota Zoo for the littles. So something for everyone. A little overwhelming to go digging around, but I highly encourage you to browse because you'll just find some incredible experiences to go along with curriculum you're already doing in class. Last but not least, the website that you don't have on that first one that I want to give you now is the Digital Learning Network from NASA. So it's DLN for the Digital Learning Network dot NASA dot gov. And this website is getting ready to change in the next couple of weeks. That's why I wanted to make sure it was active before I shared it with you today. But this is having NASA educators work with your students. When you get to the website, you're going to actually click on Event Catalog. And you're going to see that there are five pages of activities, of virtual field trips that your students can experience. And it is not all space. Some of it is like women who achieve great odds. And these are women astronauts. But it just talks about the power of somebody reaching a goal that they set out to achieve. Some of them are just math driven. There's some pieces in algebra and science in here, simple machines. 
So it's not all just space science. That's, some of them are a lot of fun as well. So if I click on this one, directive, the mapping the moon with Wally, that's as in Wally, <laughs> the Disney film. Wally actually shows up on the screen and flies around. It's the most fun. But you actually talk to real NASA educators, and they know how to talk to kids and make it engaging for students. So they're not just sitting there watching talking heads. They're learning and having fun at the same time. So you can scroll down and look at the standards, whether you are kindergarten through fourth, fifth through eighth. And they even tell you what to do before the event happens. Have you talked about the moon with your students? what you need to do to prepare for that. Asteroids, jump around, there's a Mars piece. Moon mass, um, our magnificent sun, the solar neighborhood, touring the galaxy, toys in space. Just some real, you know, there's a real variety of great things that are here. Then when you figure out which one you want to do, the trick is to come back to the home page at dln.nasa.gov and it's important that you look on this special announcement right here. They're changing their registration system. So what you would do is you're going to take a look at their temporary calendars. They have them divided up by each site. So here is the Glenn Research Center, which is in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. They are my personal favorites to work with. Uh, there's a NASA educator there called Dave Mazza, and he does one on habitats in space. I adore this guy. He really puts on an incredible experience for students, highly interactive, and uh, just we've become good friends after working with him for the past year. But with them, they originally set up to do only Polycom high-end video conferencing software that's several thousand dollars. But as of the past year or so, you can do just video conferences with a webcam. So you don't have to have special software. They will use whatever you have on your machine to connect with them and create an experience for your kids. So the only trick now is to see if they have an opening on their calendar and then follow these steps to email them and set up, this is what we want to do, and they'll walk you into the calendar. That's all there is to it. They send you the link on the day that your event's going to happen, and you're good to go. So let me jump back over here. Um, I want to stop the sharing. OK. Hopefully that should take us back to the whiteboard. There we go. And. These are the links to the virtual field trip list and the archived Google Classroom recordings that I promised you. Yes, Dave's last name from um, the Wilderness Classroom is Freeman. It truly was. I'm sorry if I missed that earlier. Sorry, Julie. But yes, and super great guy, really a great guy. But I wanted you to have these two links for yourself to go back and, and start setting up opportunities for your own. Give you a chance to snap those with your phone if you'd like to. And then, last but not least, I'm going to give you my contact information. So if you're brainstorming saying, you know, Mrs. Smith, I'm really working on something around a book or a science concept, or I'm really struggling on something for my CETE class, whatever that may be, and you want to find those real world connections, I'm glad to help you do that. So you can email me or contact me on Twitter, and I'm glad to help you get started in connecting. But more often than not, my friends, when you start connecting one time, you'll be totally ready to jump in on both feet, because once you get going in here, you'll change the way you teach forever. And your kids will be on fire with passion, because they're going to hear from people who are also passionate about what they do. So are there any questions I can answer for you today? before we head out. Thank you, Julie. I'm glad you got some new tools for yourself.
Yes, please, Karen, definitely contacting me. You're welcome, Curtis, my friend. You're welcome, Carrie. Oh, there are some good things to happen, and I've got friends in Alabama who would love to do some mystery Skyping as well. Oh, my pleasure, Krista. Thank you. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks, Katie. Um, let's see. The friends are in Huntsville and in Birmingham. Thank you, Laura. Yes, I can share the slide one previous again for you. No problem. You're very welcome. I can't wait to see what your students do to connect. Oh, fantastic, Kim. Alabama is a great state. Oh, and Athens, too. Look at this. I believe the entire webinar will be recorded, so you can come back into here or send me an email, and I'm glad to send them to you directly if you need them. So, Carrie, you'd like to have my contact information one more time? You got it. Let me write that down for you, and I'll send you those links. Oh, my pleasure. I'll get this to you straight away, Miss Julie. You're welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining me. And again, yeah, I'll do that for you, Karen. Oh, I'm glad that. to help, help you out. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Sarah. No, I just wanted to say thank you for a wonderful presentation, and I and thank you everyone who joined us tonight. I hope you got a lot out of it. I found it really exciting, and I'm ready to go on virtual field trips myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a good place to play, I have to tell you. You bet, Kim. I think I got your email. So yeah, I'll send you the links. Thanks everybody for joining. Well, if there doesn't seem to be any more questions, I guess we can close it out. Um, Diane, thank you so much. For this is a wonderful webinar and a great start to our series, Grand Story, this year. My pleasure. We really Anytime. Appreciate it.